Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Katie and we are on another instalment of Inktober 2021. We have a 3-in-1 prompt video today and we are starting off with suit. Now I had a few ideas as to what to do for this particular prompt. I didn't particularly want to do a human wearing a suit so that left me with a few animal options and I considered maybe a penguin. But then I thought we all like a cat. I thought I'd do a tuxedo cat picture. The delicious ink that I'm using today is the Artful Acrylic Ink. I haven't cracked these open properly for a while and it's Inktober so now is the best time to use them. I used the gorgeous purple colour for the background and then went straight into there with the Indian ink for the fur of our lovely tuxedo cat. I quite enjoyed doing this one as well. I think the key with Inktober and my time frame on getting these done, it's best just to keep things as simple as possible. You can create a good illustration or one at least that conveys what the prompt is without having to go into too much detail. And sometimes it's a really good exercise as well as an artist or as an illustrator to try a more simplified manner with your work. That doesn't mean it's going back on the style you've developed yourself, but I think as an artist, we should all challenge ourselves a little bit, especially since as we've been set to this challenge, we might as well make the most out of it and turn it into a learning experience. Of course, that is all of the philosophy out of the way with, and drop in the comments down below what you did for your subject for this particular prompt, I'd love to see. As we were going for a midnight scene, I thought having a blue where the cat is perched would be perfect. It just keeps those evening time vibes going. Adds that little bit of mystery and magic that I guess in October is just around the corner with Halloween. To tidy up some of the areas, I used a white gel pen and I also used a Faber Pit pen just to add some of those details in. And of course, it would not be an evening scene without a few twinkly stars thrown on there. For the next prompt, which was Vessel, I could only think of one thing that I could hold true to my heart on this one. I may have mentioned it over the course of being on YouTube. I quite like a cup of tea, and I think the perfect vessels for tea are a teapot and a cup. Now, I'll be honest with you, I'm not really fussy as far as drinking from a fine bone china cup, even though I'm from the Potteries district and that's where a lot of them were made back in the day. I kind of prefer a nice, comfortable mug. Something that can hold a lot of tea. I don't daintily sip it. I wait till it's optimum temperature and guzzle it all in one go. As well. Unfortunately, there are a few cups of tea that maybe I might have dozed off and let go cold or maybe I've been creating art and forgotten all about it. Or even the worst kind where you've got your mug on your desk next to the paint water and you know where I'm going with this one too. And whether you're a tea drinker, a coffee drinker, a water drinker or whatever your favourite tipple is, we all know that is the saddest kind of fate that they have. But well, let's move away from this morbid subject. So the pens that I used were the Karin ones, which I think we had in a scroll box last year. I like to use these for just my general doodle and sketchbook, which you guys haven't seen yet. And I don't know if you're ready for that yet, but I think they're absolutely perfect for throwing a splash of color on. They dissolve beautifully. And well, apart from the gray one, the gray one doesn't work very well. And we'll see that on the next picture. But aside from that, the colourful ones are fab. Now, to add a little bit of definition to the picture, I went around there with a good old liner pen because that's what they're for. And once I'd done that, everything started to look a little bit more cohesive. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't look at this and think of the prompt vessel. And same with the cat, actually. But this is how I interpret it. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. Because remember everyone, it's just meant to be for fun. Now, are there any prompts on this list that you're kind of dreading doing? I know there's one or two for me and uh, the next one was definitely that. 
It took me a little while to figure out what to do and how to do it and how to make it the least boring drawing ever, but unfortunately, my imagination wasn't working great this particular day. However, I did get a little inspiration again from where I live. I live in a county called Staffordshire and our emblem is the Staffordshire Knot. Don't ask me what it was for, but it's on everything in my county. I also think it looks like an upturned Art Snacks logo, but that's by the by. Now let me tell you, this was a process doing it. This was one of those ones where I think, again, because I couldn't really think of anything exciting to do for this. I tried to make it exciting with the medium. I tried to be all artsy with it, but you'll see as this develops, it just ends up looking more like a logo. And I'm okay with that. And I was happy to leave it at that, but I'll be honest with you, it's not a very exciting one. I went and filled the background in with a Karin pen again, like I used on the previous picture. And this is what I mean about the grey. It look, I am throwing the water on it. It is not dissolving. It's not moving or anything. I, I don't know if it's just the nature of the pigment in there or what, but it was having none of it. I even added it into the areas where I'd put the water and still didn't have it. So I wasn't very pleased with how it looked. And I decided to just go over the whole thing in a one of those big chunky pit marker pens in black. I know the background looks a little bit streaky, but let's face it, this isn't going in an art gallery and I'm okay with that. I used a fine pen to add the threads of the rope which creates the Staffordshire knot. In a desperate attempt to at least try and make it more interesting than it was. But you know what, it's okay. And this kind of brings me back to the point of they don't all have to be masterpieces. Even if you just do a few, or even if you don't do anything at all. It's all a process where you can learn. And I learnt that these grey pens are not as water soluble as they claim to be. However, I did find it quite useful just to add a little bit of tone and depth to the picture. And of course, it was all helped out by using a white gel pen. But not that one you've seen on screen now. I do end up using one of the Uniball ones because I personally just think they are better. I mean, look at that. That's just straight up from the get go, opaque, doing its thing. I can't, I can't, can't grumble at it. I really can't. I think by outlining it white though, it did bring it out a little bit more, made it look a little bit more logo-like and made it a little less boring than it actually is. And I'm sorry guys, I hope you weren't expecting anything too exciting for this one. But there we have it, we have three days in a row. Suit, vessel and knot. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Of course, there are some beautiful things to click on screen right now that I think you're going to enjoy. And I want to say thank you for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye.